There are some historical mysteries that may never be solved. Sometimes that's because the relevant material has been lost or an archaeological site has been destroyed. Other times it's because new evidence is unlikely to come forward or the surviving evidence is too vague to lead scholars to a consensus. Here are five unexplained mysteries. Number five, the Indian rope trick. The famous rope trick was ancient when Marco Polo saw it at the 13th century court of Kublai Khan. The fakir, an Indian musician, hurls a rope into the air and his boy assistant climbs up and then vanishes. The boy screams and his severed head crashes to the ground to the horror of spectators. The fakir puts his head into a basket and out jumps the boy. It has been witnessed many times, but no documented proof actually exists. Number four, the curse of the Pharaoh. The most famous curse of all is associated with the opening of Tutankhamun's tomb in March 1923. More than 20 of the original archaeological team died in a strange series of accidents. And by 1930, only its director, Howard Carter, remained alive. Lord Carnarvon, the expedition's backer, had been warned in 1922 by a message during a seance and again later by a palm reader. Undaunted, he challenged the psychic power of the ages and died of a fever a few weeks later after opening the tomb. Some say bitten on the face by a mosquito in the same place as a blemish on Tutankhamun's mask. Number three, the Shroud of Turin. The venerated cloth kept in Turin Cathedral is believed by many to have wrapped Jesus' body after the crucifixion. When it was photographed for the first time in 1898, the negatives revealed a true photographic image of a body. Further investigation in 1973 revealed that the weave was similar to that of Syrian cloth of the first century and pollens lodged in the fibres were of Palestinian origin. The wounds and blood flow pattern corresponded correctly to the Roman style execution. But strangest of all, the image had been scorched into the cloth. Whoever the man in the shroud was, something inexplicable had happened to him. Number two, Deloy's ape. In 1920, a group of exhausted men, including Deloy's, reached the banks of the Tara River. Located in the borderlands of Venezuela and Colombia, they were the only survivors of the Colon Development Expedition, which had disappeared in 1917. The men found no oil, but reported a strange encounter with an unknown creature. One day, Deloy spotted along the shores of the Rio Tara two large monkeys, covered with reddish fur and lacking a tail. More strangely, the two animals walked upright and slowly approached the expedition, visibly irritated, shouting and brandishing their arms and using their own excrement as projectiles against the frightened men. The men decided to respond and attack and shot in the direction of the two apes, killing the female. Since Deloitte had never seen such large monkeys, he took various photos of the body and tried to preserve the skull. However, the bones soon started to decay and all except for one image was lost. When Deloitte finally returned home, he forgot about the surviving photo and it was accidentally rediscovered. The animal in the photograph showed characteristics that are not found in the monkeys of the Americas, such as upright posture, the absence of a tail, but especially the extraordinary size. Number one, the devil's hoof prints. One of the world's greatest mysteries happened on the 9th of February, 1855, and it has never been satisfactorily explained. That morning, residents of several towns in South Devon woke to find a single line of tracks in the deep overnight snow. The mysterious tracks meandered for over a hundred miles around Dawlish. They were found in such inaccessible places as enclosed courtyards, over roofs, haystacks, even on tops of narrow walls. 
They also crossed open fields and at one point jumped the River X. Although shaped like prints of a hoofed animal, their arrangement was made that of a two-legged creature. Many frightened locals believed the devil himself had trampled their countryside.